Hello there, my name is Patrick Tissigem. I'm a managing partner at U2U, a company based in Brussels, Belgium. And I'm going to explain and demonstrate how you as a developer can create and expose search scopes in the Microsoft Office SharePoint server. Before we dive into the code, let me explain briefly what a search scope is all about. If you go as a SharePoint user to a collaboration portal, what you will find at the top of the home page is the search box, including the scope kicker listing all of the search scopes that are currently available. We have one contextual scope and two explicitly defined scopes. If I as a user enter a keyword and I execute the query, what I will get are all of the search results that are included with the selected search scope. In my case, I selected all sites, which means that I get search results from all of the content sources that have been defined by the administrator. And in my environment here, I have 65 items, but do know that in the real world, these can be thousands of items, and probably you want to deliver more search scopes to your end users so that they can narrow their search results in a better way. Now, what if you want to create a new search scope? There are two levels where you can create search scopes. You can create a scope at the level of the site collection, and then we limit the use of the scope, of course, to all of the sites included within that site collection. Or you can also go to the shared service provider administration site and create your scope over here. Then we call it a shared search scope. So let me go to search settings and let me go to the section where we can see the different scopes that are currently available. We have the two scopes that we saw in the collaboration portal, and we can create a new scope very easily. Just let us call this one presentations, because I have a content source that has been created already, and that has indexed, crawled different presentations from a network folder. So I'm going to allow my users to make use of this scope to limit the search results to items that come only from that shared network folder. So pressing OK creates the scope, and the scope is not going to do anything unless we add some rules. And you have different types of rules. You can point to a certain web address. You can make use of a property query where you use your metadata and define rules based on conditions. I'm going to mop my search scope to a specific content source called presentations. Pressing OK creates the rule, associates it with the scope, and then we will have to wait 11 minutes until the scope is ready to use. Because what needs to happen is SharePoint will have to flag the items in the index file that match the newly created search scope and its rules that define it. I'm not going to wait that long, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the search settings page and start the update now so that in a moment we will be able to make use of our search scope and visualize it in the collaboration portal. So how do you make your search scope available here within this collaboration portal? In the scope picker, you're not going to immediately see this search scope. You have to do an additional configuration as a site collection administrator. So I'm going to the site collection administration section where I will find the link to create and update search scopes. But additionally, I have here the possibility to associate my newly created search scope with a display group. A display group is associated with a scope picker and defines what the scope picker has to display for the, for the search scopes. So what I need to do is go into the detail of a display group, and then I can activate my presentations, search scope, and pressing OK will save this setting. And as a result, we will have our presentations, search scope, now available within the scope picker in this collaboration portal. So as you can see here in the scope picker, we now have presentations, 
and we can type in the query again, office, and what the user will see is the list of search results, but it has been narrowed, and we only get to see the presentations out of my network folder. Excellent. Now let's see some code. I have here a small Windows application that is going to do the same things as what you saw me doing in the browser. And before we actually start, there are a couple of references that are needed. We have the Microsoft.Office.Server.dll and the Microsoft.Office.Server.Search.dll. And then if we have a look at the code, you will see that I first have a couple of namespaces that we are going to need. And then when the form loads, I'm going to grab the context of my shared service provider. This is important, and you do this with the getContext method at the level of the server context type. You just provide it with the name of the shared service provider. And then after you have done that, you can grab the reference to your search context, again by calling the getContext, but now providing the server context of the shared service provider. The next thing we do in our little application is the display of all of the shared search scopes. We do this by instantiating an object of the scopes class, giving it the search context, and then just looping over all of the shared search scopes by calling the method getSharedScopes. After that, we can also add the different rules, and one by one, we can loop over, over all of the scopes, and as you see here, we can simply retrieve the different types of rules. We have property query scope rules, we have all content scope rules, and finally we have the URL scope rules. So based on the type of the rule, you can display some parameters to the user. Creating a rule is not difficult. We have a create method at the level of the scope collection that accepts a number of parameters. The most important ones are the name of the scope, and then the third one over here that is defining whether you're going to create a shared search scope or a local search scope. If you leave the owning site URL with the value nil, then you're going for the former. And then once you have created your scope, then you can start adding rules, and one by one you can start creating rules of different types. Here in my example, I create a URL rule, and I just provide it with the URL as the user has typed it in into the text box. So after the creation, there is a compilation, and you can start the compilation by calling this method here. And then when the compilation has been done, you can associate the search scope with a display group. So what I have here in the Windows application is just a combo box that is populated with all of the display groups that are filtered on a particular URL. And that will be the one for our collaboration portal. And then once you have selected your scope display group and you have selected the scope, what you can do is you can add the scope to the display group and save everything nicely in the database by calling the update method. So let's see our little application in action by pressing the F5 button. And what you will see immediately is that our application is connected to the search context. We can list all of the search scopes. We can add the rules that define the search scopes. And then we can start creating a new search scope, for example, local MSDN content. We can have it pointing to a site called msdn.litwareinc.com. And by pressing the Create button, we just add it to the list of shared search scopes. And then as you see here, our search scope needs compilation. So what we can do is just hit the Compile button and then wait until the compilation has finished. So if we navigate to the View Scopes page here at the level of the shared service provider, you can see that the local MSDN content scope is created and has 97 items associated with it. But over here in the collaboration portal, it is not yet part of this scope picker. So what we need to do is finalize all of the steps by asking the application to show us all of the display groups that are part of this site collection. And then select the search dropdown, select our scope, 
and then activate the scope for the display group. As a result, if we refresh our collaboration portal, what you will see is that the local MSDN comp is now, content is now available, and we can use it to filter our search results. With that, we finish our how-to. I hope you enjoyed it, and see you next time.